for the IH community, what what do you think is working well and and what do you think is lacking? Yeah. Um I think the the one of the things we have to do is uh begin to tell our stories more. Um especially as, you know, I imagine we're going to receive more people with IH diagnosis um, in the coming months and years because of long COVID and the fact that folks don't know mm-hmm. what's causing it. And because of that, it's the symptoms are being addressed piecemeal. So if a, if a person comes in um, saying they're ex- experiencing extreme fatigue and they have that sleep test, it could be that the same thing that's causing IH is also what's causing whatever's happening with this person with long COVID. Who knows? Like no one knows because there's the data is not there. Um, and so as we tell our stories, hopefully people who need access to a sleep doctor need to know that it exists, right? Like, like in the way that I didn't mm-hmm. until that Spanish teacher said something. Um, we'll hear those mm-hmm. stories. Um, we'll ask the right questions. We'll get the right tests. We'll hopefully get a treatment plan that works for them. And so us sharing those stories uh, are important. And I know it's hard because it feels stigmatizing. I get scared every time I tell my story that a future employer will say, hmm, I just saw this video. She got IH. She's dealing with these symptoms. Like, you know, it's an overcorrect for what they hear. And what I really want people to hear is knowing about it allows folks to ask for the right accommodations. It allows for folks to set the right expectations. It allows for folks to... Get the right treatment so that you can have a quality of life where, you know, I can be my who I am and not the zombie I turn into (laughs) when I don't have, you know, my treatment. 